Has there ever been a better time to get fighting fit as far as sales is concerned? While there may not be any work happening right now, that doesn't mean work can't be going on in the background. So your sales teams and sales leaders are going to be key in rebuilding for the future when we emerge from this COVID-19 crisis. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today by Raoul Monks of Flume Sales Training, who specialises in getting the most out of sales teams and sales leaders. So good morning, Raoul. Morning, Martin. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Could you maybe just give us a bit of a background about your experience, who you are, and maybe a bit of a summary, really, over what's changed in the world of sales over the last couple of months? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to. Um, so my background, 20 years of experience in media and events, 15,000 hours of sales training, and we run a business called Flume Sales Training, which is created to drive ROI through the workshops that we do. And up until um, five weeks ago, they were predominantly in-house workshops and we had a very, very strong reputation in the industry. Um, a day later, still had the reputation, but the ability to train and go into offices, etc., became quite difficult. Um, so we've seen some huge changes over the last four or five weeks, not least in our company. Um, but definitely in the industry and the importance and urgency for the right sales approaches from the sales teams because the clients right now need the right sales approaches. So we've actually shifted our company's uh, calls, I suppose, in the last four or five weeks towards helping the media and events industry to uh, navigate this incredibly uncertain and tough time and help sales teams react and adapt in the best way possible for their clients to help them get through this. So what are the biggest challenges facing sales leaders and sales teams right now? There's so many. I think the biggest one is uncertainty. There's so much change and there's for sales leaders and sales people, there's this not knowing what good looks like anymore because we've got sales teams and the leaders who are now working from home. So there's a remote element. And so the motivation of teams and driving those teams, especially if events have been postponed or cancelled. And so in some cases, there's nothing to sell or they've got to pivot to a new uh, digital solution for the time being. That uncertainty is very, very tough. And so there's a lot of people questioning what on earth am I meant to be doing? And that happens for the sales teams as well, where they're approaching their clients and their clients are responding in a completely and utterly different way than ever. And they're having to do different things and adapt and trying to learn that as they go along is incredibly difficult because we've never been in such a stressful and uncertain time as now. So everyone's being affected hugely right now. Well, that kind of leads me on to the next question. What are you kind of hearing from sales leaders and teams and from the marketplace? I think the biggest thing is, and this sounds like a bit of a catch-all, I suppose it is, is what on earth should we be doing? What what is everyone else doing and what's working and what's not working? Because for the last 10 or so years, sales leadership and sales people have been able to do it a certain way and they've learned what good looks like. Whereas now that definition of what good looks like is very different. And some people are adapting really well. Some people have the advantage of being able to adapt really well because either their events are much later in the year or it might be that they work in industries where their clients are actually um, responding in a positive way to this incredibly tough situation. There's a lot of kind of caveats to this, but the biggest thing question-wise is out there is what should we be doing? How do we avoid making mistakes right now? And what's everyone else doing? We want to know best practice. So it's that definition of what good looks like is the biggest, biggest challenge and question that's out there, I think. So kind of turning to clients, I mean, what's changed for them? So this is the big thing that we talk about at Flume, and it's almost like our mantra, which is that the biggest mistake salespeople can make is to look at everything from their own perspective and not the clients. And so this pivoting to the client's perspective, I don't think has ever been more urgent and important as it is now, because the only reason ever in sales that we should have ever done a certain approach would be to make it easier for the client to say yes. Now it's tougher than ever for a client to say yes. And if you put yourself in their shoes, which we spend a lot of time doing with our clients, um, they're in a place, the majority of these people buying potential marketing solutions where their budgets might have been cut, whether they wanted them to or not. They're very, very emotional. So their motivation levels are probably moved from ego or esteem all the way down the hierarchy of needs, probably to security. So they're worried about making mistakes, doing things wrong. There's the risk of making bad decisions, which is heightened. And they're 
emotional response to sales approaches have just gone through the roof. So the sales experience has always been magnificently important, probably more than a lot of people realize. But right now it's been magnified and exaggerated more than we've ever, ever seen. And all your clients are thinking is, how do I get out of this? How do I get through this? And is this salesperson who's approaching me doing this for the right reasons? Are they a friend or are they a foe? And ultimately, the way that salespeople work with clients right now, because of all of that risk they're going through and all of that emotional sensitivity, the sales experience is going to be more important right now than ever. And whatever your sales team do now will be remembered by your clients and potential clients forever. Tell us about the, the need to adapt. I mean, what isn't working right now? What's not working, I think, is the, and some of this is quite obvious, Marty, but is looking at everything from our own perspective. So if as a salesperson, we are set targets by our sales leaders, um, and those targets position ourselves in our own head and not that of the clients, then we're probably going to make mistakes. We might go overly aggressive and just try and hit our numbers, or we might be going overly passive and shying away from the conversations. The secret really is to position yourselves in the client's shoes think more than ever from your client's perspective what are they going through if i was that client what wouldn't work for me and actually what might make me engage what would i want from the sales experience and design things around that the biggest mistake what's not working is to look at everything from our own perspective we need to move from passivity or aggression into assertiveness which is helping your clients get through this which will help your teams get through this so what rules should sales leaders and indeed sales teams sort of be following right now? So I think the big one is one I've just said there, which is to shift perspective. So for the sales leader, the perspective shift should be from their own perspective into the shoes of their teams because their teams are working from home as are they. They may or may not have an event to sell right now. They're thinking, what on earth do we do? Am I safe? Is my role at risk? And they might be in a bed sit with some friends who they liked five weeks ago, but now being cooped up for five weeks with the same people are realizing, oh my God, I hate these people. And they've got to stay motivated. And I think shifting as a sales leader from where you are into their shoes and being really open with your teams and talking to your teams around what good looks like in your team in the next two, three months, what do you want to have achieved? And it shouldn't just be revenue targets. It needs to be about how do you want to come through this as a team and really defining what good looks like. What is the right behavior the team needs to demonstrate to come through this and creating a charter, creating a way of working um, and a way of communicating as well. And I think the other thing with the leadership rules is making sure that we're focusing on how to intrinsically motivate people. So not just with carrot and stick incentives, but using the idea from Dan Pink, who wrote a brilliant book called Drive, which is that people are intrinsically motivated by, motivated by autonomy, mastery and purpose and tapping into those and thinking, how can you drive those? And the third tip I'll probably give for leaders is to make sure that we're focusing on learning and helping your teams master what good looks like in sales right now by getting your teams continuously into clients' heads and thinking what wouldn't and what would work and really committing to that. And that is not just for the people who are still working on your teams, that's for the furloughed workers as well because we need to be making sure when these guys and girls at home who are on furlough come back that they're in a place where they can react and accelerate your results when we come through this. In terms of the rules for the salespeople, we did a webinar about three, four weeks ago, um, which is the first selling in a crisis webinar where we had about 1800 people come to that, which was amazing. And the three main rules we gave there, which was born out of what, what your clients need from the sales experience is number one, be empathetic, put yourself into the client's shoes, create buyer personas, make sure that we're acknowledging what they're going through. Number two, be purposeful, know why you exist in the client's world, which should be to help your client come out of this in the best way possible. And also in terms of being purposeful, making sure you're shifting your client's vision or horizon forward so they can stand up and see over the fog and where they need to get to, to give them confidence and assertion. And then number three is be valuable. Make sure you're teaching and educating your clients what other people like them are doing, what's working, what's not working, and become someone who's helping them do their job well. And the final tip on that be valuable bit was to become a LinkedIn extrovert, someone who is there trying to help their clients and the community so that people know you're doing stuff for the right reasons. So there'd be my kind of tips for the salespeople and previously the tips for the sales leaders, I think.
So obviously you've now given us just a, a, a snapshot of what sales people should really be learning. And now is the time to kind of get your, your beach body ready. So when, you know, when the season picks up again, now I understand you've just launched a new series of webinars. Can you just give us an idea of what sales professionals can expect from that? Yeah, sure. So we started um, our change or shift at Flume uh, in terms of trying to help the industry come through this by creating a series of free free webinars and also a YouTube channel and also Flume Chat, which is interviews with leading uh, people in the in industry who are doing really well uh, and also these tips that go out there all the time. But off the back of the first webinar, which is around selling in a crisis, where we had just this unprecedented interest, we got a load of questions that came through on the um, chat and people saying what they wanted to cover. So we've actually gone further from that and created, we're actually calling them impact uh, workshops, which are one hour, essentially webinars, um, but which go into much more depth in terms of how to be empathetic, how to be purposeful and how to be masterful. We're giving real tools you can use straight away, immediately after the workshop to put into practice. Because at heart, Marty, we are sales trainers and we're very, very good at what we do. At the moment, we're providing lots of content, but we want to make it easy for people to use. So these workshops are designed every single Monday. They're going to be at two o'clock. We've made them access for all. So there's a very, very uh, small fee of £25 per person, but that means a furloughed worker could go on it. Your whole team could go on it with a corporate approach, or you could just pay for it yourself as a salesperson. So we try to make it as available to everyone, but it's also there to help you right now stand out in front of your clients and say, we're here for the right reasons and making sure you're doing stuff in the right ways. Great. Now, we will be putting the link to that website in the comment section beneath this video. But, Raul, would you mind just telling us your website? Yeah, so the website is um, www.flumetraining.com. And actually, we've got a COVID response page on there with all of our free resources, linked to all the free webinars as well and these new ones. And we're regularly going to be updating on LinkedIn and through different sources, everything we can do to help the industry come through this. So go to the website, follow us on LinkedIn, and we'll do everything we can. Raul Monks, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Marty. Cheers, and stay safe, everyone.